Hello YouTube. In the last video, you people were sensational. All the comments you made, everybody wants to see the engine pull down. The views are quite big on that video compared to what I've been getting. Obviously, it's quite dramatic when you blow an engine. It's going to attract a lot of views. So thank you to everyone who's uh, posted nice comments, good suggestions and everything we've done. Uh, I've had quite a bit of support as well, messaging and other things that people who have supported me. If you were part of that and you have shown me the support I'm talking about, thank you very much. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Everybody wants to see this engine pull apart and knows and know what broke on it. So do I. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to film some of the processes of what we go through. So we're going to drop the oil, pull the sump, see what we find out as the first port of call. And then we're going to start looking into other things. And yeah, we pretty much know the engine is dead. I'll just say for a fact, I know it's gone. We're not saving this engine. A lot of people were saying stuff like... Um, Rebore, piston back, blah, blah, that's not going to happen. I'll tell you that straight away. This engine's getting replaced. It's dead, dead, and gone. I'm not wasting my time with it. So, what we're going to do, like I said, look into the oil and then pull ahead and see what we find from there. I'm a day because that looks like a ring. All right, so first thing I find. That is definitely piston ring on the magnet. Uh, it's got PDFE tape around it, so that's why it looks like it's grass in it. But that's definitely piston ring. Well, that's what's left in the oil. I've drained, obviously, as you can see, drained it out. Um, but there, that's the bits of left. So we got some fragments of metal. So we can safely assume the engine is completely gone. Not even concerned with repairing it. So, next thing now, pull off a sump and see what it looks like. We probably find more rings in there, I expect. So the sump off is pretty much no surprises, is it? Um, we know we were going to find bits of rings and there's pieces there, chunks in there. Now, I think these are parts of the piston where the ring lines have gone. See bits of rings there, more bits of rings there. So, pretty much, number one is devastated. So, my concern is now, has any of that gone out of the exhaust or through the turbo? Um, That'd be a bit of a nightmare if you have. Hopefully not. But there's only going to be one way to find out. So I think the next thing to do would be to pull the head. Right, before the head comes off, I've done things to make my life easier. And that is that. I pulled off the old front end. Took all the rad pack off. Just makes life a lot easier for me. Working on my own. I'm going to be swinging the engine from you. And I can just drop it straight up rather than trying to lift it up and over. But let me show you some stuff. So you can see in there, oil was just pouring out of the bottom into the cooler. So I got that draining into there. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot to work through. Going to get the wiring off, um, harnesses off and everything. Get ready to start pulling that head off. Like I did think, shall I just pull it out as it is? I'm not taking the head off because I'm not going to gain a lot. But I know you want to see, and I want to see the state of that piston. I want to see if you had any debt issues. Um, but yeah, the box is coming up with it. And then once I put everything back in, it'll be a lot easier this way. So let's make a start. Do you know what? I spent a shocking amount of time trying to detach all of this loom. Trying to get some pipe work off the front. This loom is taking forever. But there's a heck of a lot of connections on it. Um, but I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking I may end up taking the head off when the engine's out because I've got to take this mount off. The car's up high, so I've got to try and support it. But it's probably going to be easy if I strip everything off I don't need and then drop it as a lump and then take the head off. I think that's going to be the easiest option at the moment. I'm just fumbling my way through it. What I want you all to bear in mind as well, right, is I'm not a mechanic. I've never taken this engine apart before. I'm just like most of you. 
I just fumble my way through it. So everything I'm doing, if you look at anything, you Steve, you're doing it wrong. I can't help it. I don't know no better. So some of you will probably know better than what I do. So just bear that in mind. I'm just a DIYer. Yeah, it's everything on, everything on it is just awkward. Uh, I want to try and get all of this room right out of the way. I think now we have to pull some more pipes off there just to try and uh, allow me to get that out. Um, but slowly I'm getting there. Right, so yeah, more wires to undo. Now what I've done is, I've took so many pictures of this because I'm not going to remember where all this goes back. Hopefully I get it right. Right, so the rain is back, as it always is around here, but this is where we're at. Loom, all pushed up the way. And now everything is disconnected on the engine. Gearbox oil is drained, drive shafts are out, turbo still on, the exhaust uh, downpipe is um, disconnected but I think I have got everything disconnected that can come out as one lamp so it's just a case of undoing the two mounts I'm going to double check make sure that everything is ready to drop but what I'm going to then do as you've seen me before I hang from the beams because um, this is going to be a bit heavier than the box even though I have, hung in, I have had an engine hanging off here before just put a bit of timber up there. We're gonna hang off that, so we're gonna tie the two. So the plan is, I'm probably gonna put the winter on about here. And I know that's not directly below it, but I want the engine to swing out uh, and be over here a bit. So that's the plan. Right, so here it goes, and um, winch puller is on. I did go through that, as I said, and then I've just gone here and put a bolt through there, because if that can't take the weight, then what's the worst that can happen? Engine's dead anyway. So, we're going to disconnect here. Um, actually, I think I'll take these three out. And I'll do the same three out there. And then the engine can come down. So, I think that'll be the plan. I'll leave the mounts there. And they should just come down and out to by you. So, all the best plans and all. <laughs> Let's see if it goes to plan. So, I'm just going to take the other part of the mount off because I'm just struggling to park the two of them. I should try again. I'll drop the jack a bit. Lower the jack. And then start dropping the winch. Should come down. I did want to go to this little uh, wheel thing. I don't know if you can see it from there, but that's the plan. It's working. I don't think it's the best method, but it's working. So just checking, I've disconnected everything on the back, but we're pretty much ready to drop down now. Right, well, I'm going to call that a success. What my plan is now, now I've got it rotated like this, we're going to take the manifold off, turbo, get that out of the way. I can't completely release that yet because the engine will fall off there, so get the valuable bits off. And then we can slowly start the strip down. Actually, what I'm going to do now, 
I'm going to look straight into the um, exhaust hose and the turbo because I don't think we've talked about whether the turbo has survived. So let's see if there's any chips on the blades. Well, it does appear to be okay. It doesn't look like any pieces of the um, piston went out of the exhaust valve. Not so far, anyway. So, I mean, first, the first lock is good. I'm not going to say everything's perfect just yet, but it's positive. You shouldn't really be pouring oil out of your turbo like that. It's just what is sucked in from the cylinders. Well, everything with the turbo locks fine. As I showed you, the blades are fine in there. The, the intake, there's no damage in it other than plenty of oil. Um, so I think it's okay. All right, so now I really have to get this head off and see what's going on. But what I'm going to do is start stripping things off. I'm going to do a lot of it and I'm not going to film it because if I was to film it, the video would be huge. Plus, I'm not going to do anything the right way. I may even just like be cutting belts off, just hacking my way through it because the engine's dead so I can't do any more damage. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to worry about bolt sequences, nothing. I might put a little bit of effort into the bolt sequence on the head, you never know. But other than that, I'm just going to tear apart so get all the pulleys off alternator off and then get ready to start taking the head off and i'll update you then all right just an update this is where i am i've been taking loads of bits off and now some of the pumps and stuff may not come on the next engine i'll tell you more about that when that happens but i have never worked on anything as complicated as this just to get to the point of taking the head off. Incredible amount of stuff about to take off. It's just, ah, I would never want to do a timing belt on one of these in the car. Never. High pressure fuel pump is off. Now, just for your info, cam bucket is in absolutely perfect condition. Not a dip in it, nothing. It's dirty, as they usually are. They all look like that, but no, nothing wrong with the can back, back in on the fuel pump. All right, so I should allow it to come out now. Pull you off. And, oh, stuck in. Work with the rubber armor. There you are. Now it's out. The cam's out, now you can see there are 10 head bolts, five each side. Now you normally talk in a sequence and you want to talk in a sequence and I'm going to kind of do that to some extent but overall not really care, just get the head off. Right, every bolt is out. The head should come off. I'll give it a tap with the rubber mallet now. We should pop it off and we should get to see what's gone wrong in number one. This is what we got so far starting with the head all you can see is just an oily number one the rest is sutted number one is slightly cleaner um but yeah nothing dramatic with the head right the block as you can see the number one pistons cleaner they were sooty but obviously i'm assuming all of this happened after the failure but anyway what i found so far very slight movement in the liners there closing up very minor so it looks fine and a slight bit there but as for cracks the only crack that i found is on number four all right so with the light on it i don't know if you can see but ever so slightly well not ever so slightly but there is a crack and it is going down the bow but that's the only one that's cracked and the funny thing is, number one doesn't have any cracks. So let's say slight movement in there, but overall pretty good. But what I have seen is the torch. The torch has decided to die. 
Right, the only thing I have found, obviously we know the, the rings are gone on number one, and that it's taken out some of the piston. But right there, there's a suspicious shape on the edge of the piston. Now I'm assuming they should all be the same shape, but it looks, uh, I can't tell if that's a bit of broken off, or it's melted away. But what we're gonna do is get that piston out, and then we can have a, have a good look at it. To get that piston out now, we're just gonna crack off these two bolts on the bottom bearing cap, and then we should be able to pop the piston out. That's the bearings look like anyway. It's two little score lines, but they don't look in bad condition. I'm not a bearing expert, but you know. I can't feel them. Right, so this is the piston then. Now, you saw it pop out. No surprises there. It is destroyed. We knew we had chunks in there and we knew the rings had gone, but that explains the total loss of compression. Now what I want your opinion on is what's happening on the top of the, or the edge of the top of the piston there. Can you see how it's changed the shape? Has that burnt down the side? What do you think? I've got my theories on what's happened there. But I'm going to leave out with you in the comments to see what you think. I'm sure there's people out there who are more experienced than me. But you tell me what you think is, has happened to that piston then. Right. I think that is enough diagnosis for today. Well, I say today. I didn't know why this is taking me about a week on and off. It's been a lot of work. Incredible lot of work. I made a terrible amount of mess. Do you know what I'm going to do though? I'm just gonna go in, have a shower, go shopping for some tea, and forget about it all. <laughs> I'll leave you just fire away in the comments when the video goes up. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all the support, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you think. Cheers and bye.